a very good evening from stories around the world to stories here at home this is the national news broadcast i'm vidushri sadis kumar a very good evening i'm lakshit adrasingh and to start off we take a look at the headlines for tonight isolation status in several areas of colombo and kampaha ends tomorrow morning schools in tamulu will be kept closed for several days 17,000 recover from COVID-19, another 346 left to their homes today. India expresses willingness to invest in new fields for Sri Lanka's economic development. 20,100 Sapiri Gamak development projects completed. A tense situation reported from Mahara prison. The tipper truck driver who fled after running over and killing a police officer has been arrested. Corona deaths in Europe exceeds 400,000. On to those and other stories in detail, starting off with the top story for tonight. Today is the Il Full Moon Poe Day, which has recorded many important events in the Buddha Sasana history. It is also identified as the month ending the Katina Robe. History states that it's on a day like today that the Buddha launched his first Dhamma service. It is on an ill full moon poe day that Maitri Bodhisattva received Niyata Vivarana. The Buddha arrived at Uruvel Danawa to meet the three Jatila brothers and the passing away of Saryut Maha Arahatera. The Katinaro Puja also ends on ill full moon poe day. The 204th Dhamma Sermon of Amadam Sisilasa Dhamma Sermon series, which is organized on each full moon Poe Day, was held today at the Prime Minister's office, official residence on Vijay Rama Mavata under the patronage of Prime Minister Mahinda Raja Paksa. The Dhamma Sermon was delivered by the Chief Prelate of Sri Sambodhi Vihare in Kalambo 7, Venerable Boralande Vajranyana Thera. The Prime Minister and only few of the family members attended the Dhamma Sermon following health guidelines. तोर धर्मीय सनसीम तमंग उदाह कर गान डोर इस आपे आगमित तुम्हा इसे सेम धर्मान कोलव जीविते गत करन निसाम इतुमा धर्म धर्मी सनसीम कोई तरंद किया ते इन साम तमा में पौधे दावसे राठी जनता वट सेम सुबह सिद्ध्याक्म सालसादिमिंग राठी साम या रक्षा कर गे नहीं मटे ये वाकी माफी दान ना अपराध वाकी देवाल एवि� जीविते संध्या भागे कथकरण वैधिहिती पुरवेश्या दाखवा तमतमं विश्वास करन धर्म में अनुगा अनुगमान करेला जीविते धर्मानुकोलो कथकरण सनसी मुदा करेगांटा वास्ताव सलसला देने एक अपहिता नेत्तम ठाटे नायक को अतिंग सिद्धवेन नेट ओनी ताम वैधगत्म क्रियावले Sri Lanka Rupavahini Corporation telecast live Saddharma Varsha Full Moon Poe Day religious programs throughout the day from its premises. The religious programs were telecast following quarantine regulations and health guidelines. The Buddha Puja was held this noon at the Shrine Room of the Corporation. A group of the staff members, Chairman of the Corporation Dr. Nihal Jayatilaka and Director General Ajit Naragala were present on the occasion. The National Operations Center to prevent the spread of COVID-19 says that isolation status in several areas of Colombo and Gampa districts will be removed at 5 a.m. tomorrow. However, certain police areas will continue as isolated areas. The isolation status of Matakulia, Offshore and Peta in the Colombo district will be removed at 5 a.m. tomorrow. However, Peta Manning Market, Fort and Fifth Streets will be kept closed. Mudwal, Blue Mandal, Kotehena, Grand Pass, Adrupvedia and Dam Street in the Colombo district will continue to be isolated areas. Keselvatta, Maligavatta, Demotogoda and Maradana will also continue to be isolated areas. Vakanda, Gramanildar Division of Slave Island Police Area, Vanathamula Gramanildar Division of Borella Police Area are among the isolated areas. Meanwhile, Run the Uena housing scheme of Matakulia Police Division and southern area of Ferguson Road are scheduled to be declared as isolated areas from 5 a.m. tomorrow. 
Laksanta Sevana Housing Scheme and Salamulla of Vallampadia Police Division and Vijayapura Gram Nildar Division will be made isolated areas from tomorrow morning. Isolated status of Nigambo and Ragam of Gampa District will be removed at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Vattala, Paliagoda and Kalnia areas will continue to be isolated areas. The National Operational Centre to Prevent the Spread of COVID-19 says that isolated areas of other areas will remain to be so until further notice. In the meantime, the percentage of COVID-19 recoveries in the country has increased up to 72.93. The Epidemiology Unit says that a total of 17,002 COVID-19 recoveries are included in that number. 346 fully recovered patients have left the hospitals today. A batch of 45 patients at COVID-19 treatment centres in Polonaro district have left the centres today following their complete recovery from the disease. The recovered patients have been identified as residents from Kalamba, Kurunagala and Anuradhapura districts. Director of the K. Gaul General Hospital, Dr. Mihiri Priangani, says that another batch of 13 patients at the COVID-19 treatment centre in Pinnavala have fully recovered and left the centre. The recovered patients have been identified as residents from Colombo. A, a total of 12,238 COVID-19 patients have completely recovered and left the hospitals from the commencement of this month up to date. The highest number of patients have left on the 5th of this month. 346 have left today. The percentage of COVID-19 recoveries in the country is 72.93, while the percentage of active COVID-19 patients currently receiving treatment stands at 26.60 with 6,200 patients. A total of 323 COVID-19 patients were detected from the country today. The patients have been identified as close contacts of the Paliagoda COVID-19 cluster. A total of 11,936 PCR tests were conducted yesterday. Accordingly, more than 814,937 PCR tests have been conducted in the country at present. Two COVID-related deaths were reported in the country yesterday. The deaths were reported from Colombo 2 and Colombo 8 areas. Governor of the Northwestern Province, Raja Kolure, says that the provincial schools, which were temporarily closed, will be reopened from tomorrow following health guidelines. Dambulla Mayor Jalia Opata says that all schools in Dambulla Education Division will be closed from tomorrow until the 4th of next month. The schools will be closed due to two employees of the Dambulla Economic Centre and a businessman have been infected with COVID-19. It has been decided to close schools temporarily for a few days following a discussion with regional health authorities and police. Sri Lanka Ports Authority says that the spread of coronavirus at the port premises has been controlled to a considerable extent. Meanwhile, the number of COVID patients reported from Ahaliagoda Health Authority area has increased to 46 with five patients found today. A program to educate on quarantine of contacts of patients took place with the participation of 50 officers of Ratnapura District Public Health Inspectors Association. Another 11 patients have been found from the textile factory at the Avisavela Sitavaka Export Processing Zone. Members of 169 families of their contacts have been subject to self-quarantine. A doctor who was maintaining a private medical centre at Ruanwella Anguruwella area has been infected with COVID-19. Ruanwella Medical Office said that he had not taken health protective measures. Around 1,000 people have sought treatment from the doctor and more than 500 of them have been subject to self-quarantine by last night. Health authorities request the persons who obtained treatment from the doctor during the past few days to inform the public health inspector in their area. The four patients identified from Kotagala Pradesh Sabha area last night were sent to COVID-19 treatment centres. Their contacts have been subject to self-quarantine. Atalugama Alothiava Police Checkpoint is providing essential food items to the people isolated at Kalutara Atalugama area. Disinfecting of the area is also underway. Meanwhile, 501 Sri Lankans in Dubai, Doha, Qatar, India, Maldives and Australia have been brought down to the country. Well, now let's take a look at how the world is combating the COVID-19 pandemic.
Well, the new cases of the coronavirus continue to grow worldwide after countries reported a total of 62.3 million infections. Over 1.45 million deaths attributed to the virus have also been recorded with the United States, Brazil and India continuing to lead in both cases and deaths globally. The United States has registered more than 200,000 COVID-19 infections yesterday, the 25th day in a row that the country sees more than 100,000 coronavirus infections in a day. The national tally of the COVID-19 infections in the U.S. reached 13.2 million and the U.S. death toll from the disease increased to 266,000. More than 400,000 deaths from the novel coronavirus have been registered in Europe yesterday as the second worst hit region after the Americas Euro, rather Europe saw so 18.28 million confirmed cases. Russia reported 26,683 new coronavirus cases today, taking the national total to 2.2 million. Russia confirmed deaths of 459 coronavirus patients in the last 24 hours, pushing the Russian death toll to 60, rather 39,500. In France, which has the most cumulative confirmed cases in European Union countries, a further 12,580 people tested positive in a 24-hour span yesterday, driving the cumulative number of infections up to 2.2 million, including 52,100 fatalities, with 213 new deaths reported in the past 24 hours. France started the first phase of its three-stage opening strategy yesterday. The second stage of the government's planned return to normalcy is scheduled for December 15th if the number of daily COVID-19 cases is brought to under 5,000 per day. The number of confirmed coronavirus cases in Germany increased to rather increased by 14,600 to 1.4 million today. The reported death toll rose by 158 to 16,100. The tally showed Germany expected to keep its COVID-19-related restrictions in place during the first months of 2021. Meanwhile, Britain secured an additional 2 million doses of Moderna COVID-19 vaccine candidate with a potential access to adequate amount of doses of the vaccine for around 3.5 million people. Overall, it has access to 357 million doses of vaccines from seven different developers. In the UK, a further 479 people died within 28 days of testing positive for COVID-19 yesterday. Brazil has registered 51,900 additional coronavirus cases yesterday, including 587 new deaths. In total, Brazil has now registered a total of 6.2 million confirmed infections and 172,500 deaths since the start of the pandemic. Meanwhile, the Australian state of Victoria, which has recorded 30 days with no confirmed coronavirus cases, has eased some of its restrictions. Accordingly, businesses will be allowed to open their workplaces to a quarter of their employees. Now, more than 150 people have been arrested as anti-lockdown protesters clashed with police in central London after officers sought to break up a demonstration. The Metropolitan Police said 155 arrests were made for offences, including breaching coronavirus regulations and assaulting a police officer. Riot police clashed with anti-lockdown and anti-vaccine protesters in central London on Saturday. Police said that they'd made over 60 arrests and expected that figure to rise as they tried to break up the demonstrations. Officers said that the arrests had been made for different offences, including breaching coronavirus restrictions. Police lined up in a number of streets in central London's West End shopping district. Earlier, the anti-lockdown protesters were joined by groups who opposed the COVID-19 vaccine and they marched through the city. We're sick and tired of being abused. We're sick and tired of living in fear. They thought they could easily get their great reset. Little did they know, little did they know. They thought they could easily have it. Pandemic little did they know. Look into the governments. Look, look, look at the globalist agenda. One police officer estimated the protesters numbered between 300 and 400. England's current national lockdown ends on December 2nd. Well, news from coronavirus in India. 
Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi toured three of his country's leading vaccine development and manufacturing sites yesterday as cases of the virus continue to show. India added 41,800 fresh cases in the last 24 hours, taking the total tally to 9.39 million in the world's second worst infected country, including 136,696 deaths. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi toured three of the nation's leading vaccine development and manufacturing sites on Saturday as coronavirus case counts continue to soar. India's recorded at least 9.35 million COVID-19 infections, second only to the United States. It reported 41,322 new cases and 485 deaths on Saturday. The western state of Maharashtra home to India's financial hub, Mumbai, has been particularly hard hit by the virus. Its tally of 1.68 million cases is higher than countries such as Spain, Italy and the United Kingdom. A street market in India's capital, New Delhi, was packed with shoppers on Saturday, despite the climb in cases. Regional authorities sent coronavirus-themed rickshaws to spread awareness about the virus and the importance of wearing masks and social distancing. In a series of tweets, Modi congratulated scientists on their progress and assured them of his government's support. The companies are testing homegrown vaccine options as well as working on trials of vaccines being developed overseas. And in more local stories, the National Security Advisor of India, Ajit Doval, says that India is willing to identify new fields that will lead to economic development in Sri Lanka and to invest in them. He mentioned this when he met President Gotabe Rajapaksa at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday. President Rajapaksa and the Indian Security Advisor engaged in a highly fruitful discussion aimed at further strengthening all forms of bilateral relations. indo lanka Security Corporation maintaining peace and security in the Indian Ocean region, infrastructure development in Sri Lanka were among the major topics discussed. Both sides agreed that the infrastructure development projects initiated with the assistance of India should be completed expeditiously. Both President and the Indian Security Advisor stressed the need to further consolidate mutually beneficial bilateral cooperation, which is already at a very satisfactory level. Minister Kehli Rambukwala says that the people in the north have shown that the Tamil National Alliance is not their sole representative through election results. Well, he mentioned this while attending the launch of Galmaduvatta Road Development Project in Kundasala Electoral Division. The minister said it is humorous to note that MP Sumandiran engages in various activities to be a hero before LTTE diaspora. Minister Kehli Rambukwala said that he wanted to show the Tamil diaspora that he is appearing on behalf of them. They have rejected him as the sole representative of the Tamil people. The Ministry of Finance says that work on 20,117 projects under Sapiri Gamak Rural Development Program has been completed. The project includes 37,000 programs. The Sapiri Gamak Program is implemented to uplift livelihood, social and economic situation of the rural people. The value of completed projects is 15,000 million rupees. The program has been implemented from the 31st of October. The program is implemented with the aim of connecting village, town, rural markets and main cities. Priority has been given to build and repair rural roads. 2,915 kilometers of roads have been constructed and repaired. 362 culverts have been newly built. 82 culverts have been modernized. 50 newly built and repaired rural bridges have been vested with the people under the Sapiri Gamak program. 22 weekly fairs and rural markets have been established with the aim of developing self-employment. People have been vested with 59 agricultural storage facilities, 14 agriculture wells, 399 kilometers of drainage systems and 28 storm water projects under the program. 
183 irrigation projects have been completed to meet the drinking water needs of the rural people. 179 health centers and school sanitary projects have been vested with the people to improve health and education of rural communities. 2 million rupees have been allocated for each Gramaniladari division under the program. More attention has been paid on the projects that have been neglected during the past few years. The program is expected to build an economy giving prominence to people by eliminating regional disparities through village development according to the Vistas of Prosperity Manifesto. The development of Minuangoda Udugampola Patahavatta Road commenced today under the patronage of Minister Prasanna Ranatunga. More than 6,280,000 rupees have been allocated for development activities. State Minister Pial Nishanta launched the development of Wadua Molligoda Cemetery Road. 20 million rupees has been allocated to modernize the road. Wadua Marvellous Sundry Park Road and Isurudisi Garden Main Road were vested with the public yesterday after development. It was vested with the public under the patronage of Minister Rohita Abekunavardhana. Maharakma Bai Road, which has been developed, was also vested with the public. The development of Kaduela Valivita Lake Road is underway at present. Minister Vimal Viravansa inspected the project recently. Nearly 55 million rupees will be spent to develop the road, which is about one and a half kilometers. The development of the road from Gaul Road to Moratua Ravatavatta Dharmaratna Mavata up to Jubilee Road commenced today. 14.5 million rupees will be spent to develop 1.25 kilometers of the road. Renovation of Bandaravilla Road to Pingarava through Kappetipola Road to Badulla Vele Kade launched today. The 2 km road will be renovated at a cost of 9 million rupees. The development of Dikhenapura Narthanagala Velamada Road and Poranavatta Rajakiya Vidyala Mavata commenced today under the patronage of State Minister Vidura Vikramanayaka. The development of Hambantota Suryavava Vidyala Mavata commenced yesterday. The road is 2 km long. 260 million rupees will be spent to develop the road. Minister Chamal Rajapaksa and a group of people were present at the occasion. The road will be developed with two lanes and with facilities for the school students to travel safely on the road. Devata Vijitarama Road in Gaul is also being developed at a cost of 2.5 million rupees. The development of road from Rambukkana Diyasunnata to Boralua launched under the patronage of State Minister Kanaka Herat. Nearly 21 million rupees will be spent to develop 1.17 kilometers of the road. One inmate has died and another three have been injured when trying to control an unrest occurred at Mahara prison. Police said the injured inmates have been hospitalized. The prison officers of Mahara prison have used force in order to control an unrest situation happen in the Mahara prison this evening. Uh, according to the reports, one death has been reported and in addition to that, three inmates have been injured in the incident and the, the injured persons have been admitted to hospital. In addition to that, four police teams uh, headed by SSP Kalani and OIC Ragama have been sent to Mahara prison in order to control the situation. Uh, in addition to that, uh, a special and in addition to that, a special police teams of in addition to that, a special teams of uh, special task force uh, have been sent to Mahara prison area in order to provide the security in respect of outer perimeter of the prison. Well, with that, staying for more local stories coming up next. Welcome back. The tipper truck driver who fled after running over and causing the death of a police officer has been arrested. The accident has occurred at last night at Kobegane area. Police Constable Ratnaika attached to Kobegane police station has died in the accident. He is a father of two children and a resident of Nikavaratiya Rasnaikapura area. Police Constable Ratnaika has ordered the driver to stop the tipper truck when they were inspecting vehicles at Hathalava area last night. However, the vehicle has disobeyed the police officer, run over him and fled the scene. The vehicle has been found today abandoned at Kuliapitiya Karantiyapula area. 
The vehicle has been taken into custody following an information received by Kuliapitiya Acting Headquarters Inspector Kamal Ratnayaka. Officers of Kuliapitiya and Nikavaratiya Police Stations conducted investigations into the incident. In addition to that, a murder in respect of a 32-year-old police constable was reported from Kobegane police area. Uh, the truck driver, a 27-year-old person, was arrested by HQI Nikavaratiya this morning at 11.30. In addition to that, uh, the tipper that had been used to commit the crime has been traced in uh, Kuliapitiya police area this morning. In addition to that, the magisterial inquest in respect of the death of the police constable uh, was conducted this morning by the magistrate uh, Nikavaratiya and the magistrate has ordered to conduct the autopsy in respect of the dead body. The judicial medical officer of uh, Kurunagal Hospital, the autopsy in respect of the late uh, police constable would be conducted tomorrow in Kurunagal uh, Hospital by the, uh, the judicial medical officer. Uh, in addition to that, it has been revealed the suspect who has committed this uh, murder had involved in three crimes in the past. He had transported timber illegally and he has been convicted in respect of that particular illegal timber transportation and he has been fined 50,000 rupees by the court. In addition to that, uh, the lorry that had been used to transport timber uh, has been confiscated by court. In addition to that, another two cases are pending against this particular suspect in respect of uh, sand transportation. The both cases are pending at the moment. The wild elephant who frightened people in 14 villages including Tambuttegama, Dambalupura, Kudagal Vihare was captured yesterday. Well, the wild elephant known as Niyapotta has destroyed nearly 50 houses, 100 acres of banana trees and many coconut trees. The operation to capture the wild elephant was launched with the participation of wildlife officials of Tambuttegama, Anradpur and Haropatana wildlife officers. Thereafter, the wild elephant was brought today to Haropatana Special Elephant Conservation Centre. Minister C.B. Ratnayaka was present on the occasion and he held discussions with the people in the area and wildlife officials about the wild elephant problem. 